You've been running around London for the past few days. You deserve time to unwind. The last thing that you want is to endure another lengthy flight to your next destination. Most people feel as though they just don't have a choice. Well, there's always an alternative. You just have to think a little outside the box. Getting from destination to destination doesn't have to be a nuisance. So why not make it a more significant part of your trip? I'm not suggesting that you spend your annual salary on a first class air ticket just to be able to stretch your legs. But how does seven carefree days sound instead? How about seven days of all-inclusive, world-class food? How about all-day entertainment? Starting to dread the thought of economy legroom? Don't. You're about to step on to the world's largest, most luxurious ocean liner, the Queen Mary II. Cunard's Queen Mary II is the only passenger ship operating as an ocean liner and regularly makes transatlantic crossings from Southampton to New York. Not too long ago, this was the only way to get from Europe to the Americas. However, the birth of the passenger jet changed the way we travel entirely. Inevitably, the experience of getting from point A to point B was lost through the obsession of saving time. Cunard pays homage to the era of the Titanic by bringing back the luxury in travel. The Queen Mary II docks in Southampton, just an hour from London by bus. The sheer size of the ship will leave you feeling overwhelmed, and standing on the docks looking at your home for the next seven days, you'll start to understand how 2,700 guests fit comfortably on the ship. You might be wondering how you could afford an experience on this scale, but it's actually a lot more economical than you might think. Of course, you could easily spend tens of thousands of dollars during the week at sea, but there are always ways to stretch the budget. Finding a good deal on an interior stateroom and sharing it with two or three people will by far be the best way to keep the cost of the trip down. These rooms are tight, but manage to make clever usage of the space. You won't have the luxury of a private balcony, or even a window for that matter, but you'll find yourself spending very little time in your room. One of the biggest worries people have when considering a transatlantic voyage is whether or not boredom might kick in after a day or two. When it comes to Queen Mary II, the answer is simple, no. Each night when you return from dinner, your assigned butler will have done up your room, left chocolates on the bed, and provided you with a program for the next day's activities. Several events are planned hourly on different parts of the ship. It is up to you to decide which of these interest you. On the other hand, you could choose to spend all your time in the library with a good book or relaxing by one of the many pools on board. You don't have to be a foodie to appreciate the culinary experiences available on the ship. You might even become one before you reach New York. And if you're worried about gaining a little weight while on board, well, it's inevitable. There are so many dining options available, from fine dining to the comfortable lounges. Let's first take a look at where you'll most likely spend most of your time. King's Court is open 24 hours a day, offering an impressive range of freshly cooked foods and stylish seating areas where you'll be able to enjoy ocean views from the bay windows. This buffet restaurant takes up a significant portion of Deck 7, serving gluten-free foods, vegetarian options, and a wide range of meat and fish dishes. You'll also be able to enjoy a selection of juices, teas, and coffee at one of the beverage stations. If you wish to be served instead, you can always head over to the Britannia restaurant for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You'll just need to take note of the dress code each night. On occasion, gala evenings require guests to dress formally. Examples of what can be expected can be found on Cunard's main website. Don't stress if you aren't into dressing up though, King's Court does not have a dress code. When it comes to bars and lounges on the Queen Mary II, you can rack up a hefty drinks bill if you're not careful, as alcoholic drinks are not included during your time at sea. You may also just want to sit back and relax while enjoying a good book. You are not obliged to order anything. There are drinks packages you can purchase as well, but these are generally not worth the extra cash. Speaking of cash on board, there isn't any. During check-in, you'll be given a personalized access card that you'll be able to link to your credit card. Not only will this card act as a method of payment, it will also be used to access your room and enter onboard activities such as bingo. If you've saved a little more money than expected during your time in London, you might want to spoil yourself with a gift from one of the shops. 
fancier perfume? What about a stylish watch? You could even fit in some clothes shopping if you didn't quite find what you were looking for in London. And if none of this floats your boat, you could always head over to the souvenir shop for that trusty key ring. From outdoor paddle tennis to an intense ping pong match, this ship is equipped with facilities for all ages. During the day, these facilities are occasionally used for friendly tournaments between guests, and the scheduled times can be found in the daily program. You can show off your mini golfing skills too, or try your luck at shuffleboard. The more activities you win, the more stamps you'll be able to collect and trade in for a souvenir or two. If you prefer the type of game that involves sitting, there's of course a special place on board for you. There are two light and airy corridors on deck two that offer a range of board games, as well as a place to sit by the window and enjoy the waves from up close. You can even help build a puzzle if you're feeling up to it. Fancy a dip in the pool? You might just find it hard to choose which one. There are several indoor and outdoor pools and hot tubs on board. You will often find a live band playing alongside the pool, as well as waiters attending to those who want a cocktail or two. On the other hand, there's nothing wrong with spending your time at sea educating yourself on several topics. Instead of lounging by the pool all day, you could attend lectures by special guest speakers. These lectures will correlate with the theme of the week, which can range from fashion to astronomy. There is also an impressive movie theatre on the Queen Mary II, which doubles as the world's first planetarium at sea. This theatre is used as a lecture venue, a movie house, and a place to immerse yourself in the stars. The Royal Court Theatre is a separate theatre used for live performances, most of which occur before and after dinner. A variety of acts ensure that there is something for everyone. You will find everything from classical piano performances to dance acts, stand-up comedy to full band performances, all of which are world-class acts. And if you enjoy this type of art, you'll most certainly appreciate the fine art displayed in the gallery. All the paintings and sculptures on show are for sale and can be shipped to your home address. With a name like Queen Mary II, you can expect high tea to be a treat. And a treat it is. Hosted in the Queen's room every afternoon, you'll once again find yourself spoiled for choice. Decadent chocolates, pastries, sandwiches, and a variety of teas will certainly keep you going until dinner. The Queen's Room is also used as a ballroom from time to time and is host of the Guests Talent Show. Club G32 is where each night draws to a close. With a resident DJ, flashing lights, and a good mix of new and old tracks, you'll find yourself dancing with strangers and having a ball. But before you know it, just as you've gotten used to being pampered, just as you've become accustomed to being waited upon, and just as you've forgotten about all the stresses of the real world, you'll see New York's light start to appear in the early morning sky. And just like that, your time on the Queen Mary 2 will be over. In part four, it's New York, baby. We'll go through all you need to know about saving valuable bucks while making the most of your time in the Big Apple.